okay so welcome to the last lecture of uh, electricity and magnetism as a course uh, in the last lecture what we did was uh, we tried to conclude the inductance topic we learned how to drive uh, the values of uh, the expressions for uh, inductances self inductance and mutual inductance we uh, tried to understand we tried to comprehend why Uh, the materials or why the inductor behaves in a certain way when we talk about uh, ac currents uh, and we we try to comprehend that uh, why there is a reactance in a conductor <clears throat> whenever in an inductor whenever an ac current is passed through it and why it behaves as a short circuit uh, condition whenever there is uh, a dc which is flowing through that thing so uh there was that uh, now the topic for today is uh, the magnetic energy the magnetic energy that is stored inside uh, an inductor whenever uh, a current is passed through it so we'll talk a little bit about that basically uh, the magnetic energy or magnetic potential energy is a counterpart of electrostatic potential energy that we studied in electrostatics so we'll uh, refer to electrostatic energy we examined that what happened to the energy which is expanded in charging up a capacitor when we charge it from 0 volts and to some voltage v and whenever that capacitor is charged uh, we said that now uh, as it is charged it will act as a voltage source and the same analogy we are going to follow the same analogy here but in this case we will talk about inductance uh, in replacement of a capacitance now inductance basically is connected to a current source as i uh, have already mentioned and i have already explained that Uh, an inductor basically uh, opposes the sudden change in current if you want to increase uh, the current from 0 to uh, obviously any any maximum value 0 to 10 ampere in uh, just an instant the inductor will oppose that change and why is that is because i talked about it in the last lecture that whenever we change the amount of current as a result the magnetic flux that is linked Uh, with itself, it changes, and as a result, a back EMF is produced, and that back EMF basically opposes that change in current. So it means that if there is an inductor and a hundred amount, a hundred ampere of current is passing through that inductor, and you suddenly uh, uh, drop that, uh, or you suddenly disconnect. Uh, Uh, you suddenly disconnect uh, that circuit uh, from the supply as a result uh, the current should uh, immediately fall to zero but uh, the characteristic of the inductor basically resist to do so and as a result there will be amount of current which will flow through the circuit even when the uh, even when the circuit is disconnected from uh, your grid or your uh, energy providing source that current uh, where does that current comes from that current is basically stored inside the inductor in the form of a magnetic field obviously that will uh, go back to zero uh, but uh, there will be a short interval of time in which that inductor is going to act as a current source it will provide that current and that current comes from the energy that is stored inside uh, the inductor so what we'll do Uh, today is that we'll try to figure out the value of energy that is stored inside a conductor whenever uh, we increase the amount of current from uh, one value to another value so he is saying that suppose that we were to increase the current from i uh, to the final current capital i so we have uh, a current we have an inductor and a current of small i is flowing through that conductor and what we uh, what we're doing is that we increase we're increasing the current uh, to the final amount of capital i and wh what we'll try to do today is that we'll uh, try to quantify that how much energy is being stored as a result of this process that we are doing inside the inductor so he's saying that from circuit theory whenever we'll increase the amount of current from small i to Uh, large i we know that the voltage across the inductor if we find if we want to find the voltage across the inductor that is going to be v is equals to l d i by d t this basically tells us that the uh, basically is telling us the change in current with respect to time 
so he's saying that if we want to calculate the value of uh, p we know that the value of p is basically uh, the product of v and i so the total energy in joules expanded in building up the current uh, in the inductor from zero to i is going to be <coughs> Uh, if we want to calculate the value of energy, we'll say that power will integrate that power for that interval of time. Obviously, we know that uh, power is work per unit time. So if we want to calculate the work, we'll say that uh, we have P D T and this is D W obviously. So if we want to calculate the value of W, we'll integrate P uh, for the whole time D. So he's saying that basically this is uh, the expression. Uh, so we'll integrate it uh, for the whole interval of time and we'll find out the value of omega m. But before doing so, uh, he's putting the value of p in this equation. The value of p obviously is v i dt. And if you put in the value of v that was mentioned here into this equation, as a result, this equation will become l t i by d t i t t this d t is going to be cancelled and as a result this w m is going to be integral l small i and then we have d i so now if we integrate this expression we'll integrate it according to d i we'll integrate it according to the amount of current amount of current that is changing so if the amount is uh, amount of current that is changing is from zero to the final current i then we'll integrate this expression. L is a constant, it will come outside. We'll have i di and we're integrating it from zero to i as a result. What we'll have is L one by two i square. Okay, so we can write it as one over two L i square. This is in joules. So this is the expression you have uh, studied most of the time just like you were you studied 1 over 2 cv square when we calculated the value of uh, magnetic or oh, electrostatic potential energy that was stored inside a capacitor after it is charged so he's saying that this is basically the value of uh, magnetic potential energy this is which is stored inside an inductor when its current is increased from zero to the final current i now he's saying that uh, this is the generic expression, uh, but it is not uh, applicable to most of the scenarios. Uh, what we'll try to do is we'll try to figure out an expression in which we can uh, put in the values of different things according to the structures that we have been given. Uh, so for that case, uh, he's saying that let's take the example of a solenoid. And for, for a solenoid, we calculated the value of self-inductance that was a mu n square s divided by small l and for that the value of <laughs> for an uh, solenoid the value of b was mu n i over l and we'll use this expression to calculate the value of i through a solenoid so the i is going to be uh, b l divided by mu n so what is trying to do here is that he's trying to put the value of l and i from these equations into this equation so that we might be able to figure out the value of uh, the magnetic energy that is stored inside a solenoid whenever its current is increased from zero to uh, capital i so as a result uh, he's putting in these values uh, right now we have one over two the value of l is going to be mu n square s divided by small l and then we'll have a b l divided by mu n one n is going to be cancelled with this a small b is cancelled uh, small l is going to be cancelled with this and as a result we'll be left with one over two sorry this was i square so don't uh, make the same mistake that I did right now. So the, the remaining uh, expression will be b square over uh, mu and will have l and will have s. This s and 
as there was a square one l will cancel and one l will be remaining so we'll have l into s we know that we can change this l into s with volume so we can rewrite this uh, wm as 1 over 2 b square over mu into v this v is volume not voltage here so he's saying that uh, if we exchange this b with b is equals to mu h what will happen is that we'll have 1 over 2 mu square h square divided by mu into v volume obviously this mu will cancel out we'll have 1 over 2 mu and h square so this is going to be uh, obviously this is volume this is also going to be multiplied with this. So this is the expression that we have for the magnetic energy that is stored uh, in a solenoid. And if we talk about magnetic energy density, the magnetic energy density is the magnetic potential energy per unit volume. So this is going to be 1 over 2 mu h square. This is magnetic energy density. So whenever uh, the examiner asks to ask from you to calculate the value of magnetic energy, uh, you have to keep in mind and you have to look for what he is asking you to do. If he is asking you to calculate the value of magnetic energy or if he is asking you to calculate the value of magnetic energy density because uh, the process to calculate the value of magnetic energy density is going to be pretty simple as compared to the value of uh, the process of calculating the value of magnetic energy itself because uh, in that case you have to integrate the magnetic energy for the whole volume but if you are required to calculate the value of magnetic energy density then you don't uh, need to integrate it for the whole volume so he is saying that even though this expression is derived for solenoid but it is also uh, equally valid for any medium which has a magnetic energy or magnetic uh, intensity so uh, in order to do that in order to use this type of equation for any volume we need to generalize this so uh, magnetic and potential energies expression was uh, 1 over 2 mu h square rho uh, uh, v obviously volume and if we want to generalize it for any structure what we have to do is that we have to integrate this thing <coughs> for the respective volume so this is going to be a generic expression if you have been given with a certain type of scenario all you have to do is that you have to put in the value of h you have to integrate it according to uh, the volume of that particular structure and you'll have the value of wm this is pretty similar to the question <coughs> in the quiz that you did in the last uh, in the fourth quiz uh, in which you you were required to calculate the value of electrostatic potential energy it is pretty similar to that one so in order to understand this uh, a little bit more effectively uh, here is an example uh, in this example what we'll see what's given he's saying that um, calculate the value of magnetic energy is is not saying to calculate the value of magnetic energy density but he's saying the cal to calculate the value of magnetic energy in a coaxial cable and the length of that coaxial cable is given to be small l and the inner radius is given to be a and the outer radius is small b just like all the other uh, examples that we solved and the permeability is mu so he's saying that uh, what do we need to do first of all uh, you need to uh, remember the expression for mega for wm <coughs> the expression for wm is 1 over 2 integral mu h square dv so taking a look at this uh, you need to have the value of h apart from that you need to know how you are going to calculate the integral for the volume of coaxial cable i think that's pretty simple 
uh, first you need to know what is the value of H. So you we know that the value of B for a coaxial cable is always mu uh, phi hat mu i over 2 pi r. So if uh, you want to take the value of H, you will just eliminate this mu. We will have H i over 2 pi r. So this is the value of H. We have the value of H now. What we'll do is we'll put in this value. We have Wm 1 over 2 and we have mu and we have uh, i square over 2 to the 4 pi square r square and we have tp. So there's this and right now uh, what remains is to figure out the value of this dv. As we know that h is always the function of r only in the axial cable, you know that we only have r here. So this means that we have to choose dv uh, by, by choosing a cylindrical shell in which we have a radius as a function. So we know that we'll choose the value of dv to be 2 pi r l. You know how this comes out to be. We have studied this a lot of uh, times, uh, obviously, uh, dr. <clears throat> okay, so what we are doing is we're putting the value of dv to be this. So 1 over 2 mu i square divided by 4 pi square r square. And then we have 2, we have pi, we have r, we have l, and then we have dr. The main thing that we needed to take into account was that uh, this r, this dr should be here uh, because the h is basically the function of r only. So uh, this is it. Uh, this r will cancel out this single r. This pi will cancel out this single pi. This 2 will cancel out this. And what we'll have is... I think there is some... Okay, so uh, what we'll have is mu and we'll have i we'll have uh, obviously i square we'll have 4 we'll have pi and what else we'll have l and inside the integral we're going to have 1 over r and dr and this is going to be integrated from a to b and as a result we'll have mu we'll have i square We'll have small l, we'll have 4 pi, and then we'll have log natural, we'll have p over a. So this is the value of omega uh, Wm, magnetic energy, that is stored inside this coaxial cable. And this is it. This is the answer. So this is quite simple. Uh, the only thing that is challenging in this uh, example is figuring out what is the value of dv that you need to take okay so please take uh, the value of dv according to the scenario that is given to you in this expression in this question in this case it was pretty simple because all we uh, needed to know that uh, as h was the function of r so it me it meant that whatever the value of dv might be it should have dr in it so that's why we took uh, the value to be 2 pi r l into dr so okay this is it for today and this was the last topic for our course uh, i'll urge you to exercise uh, practice all the questions that are given in exercise uh, implement all these concepts on different types of scenarios and if there is something that confuses you I'll always be here 
you just need to contact me uh, and tell me the problem that you are facing and we'll try to figure that thing out uh, this is it for today thank you for your cooperation and best of luck for your final exams